Hi everyone, my name is uh, Alexandre Passon, I'm from Derry, Galway, and I will introduce you Sparkle, um, a tool that I made recently to help people use data available on the web, data without uh, doing Sparkle queries by themselves. So I've just got one slide to introduce the ID and then I will do a demo of the application. Um, so the motivation is that now there are millions of URIs available on the web to describe the resources thanks to the linking open data community efforts. So you've got data from DBpedia, DBtoon, GeoNames and so uh, that you can use in your applications for instance to um, add a DBpedia abstract to enhance your blog post or your um, any web page. Um, one issue is that it currently requires either um, directly using Sparkle to query those URIs or RDF APIs to take advantage of it. So it's in a way quite complex for developers, especially for non-semantic web ones. So I wrote uh, Sparkle, a simple web service that um, allows everyone to run Sparkle queries without um, having to learn Sparkle and by simply using URLs uh, of web service to run queries about URIs, uh, but any URI actually that follows the link data principles. So let me demo you the application. So Sparkle can be accessed on sparkle.net. So if you take this query, for instance, uh, this is a query you will have to write if you want to find the abstract of uh, semantic web in DBpedia in English. So um, you dereference the URI here using the from clause, and then you ask for the abstract of that resource, and then you filter by lang. Uh, so that's I guess an easy query for everyone that knows how to do Sparkle, but for a web developer uh, it might be quite hard. And first, uh, to run that query you need to get a Sparkle engine. Uh, well, in that case you can use the DBpedia endpoint, but for some data set that do not, do not have endpoint, you have to uh, set up your uh, Sparkle engine like uh, uh, LibRDF for instance, or Sesame or so to, to run that query. So what I've done is that Sparkle service in which you can use URLs uh, using that simple pattern, so sparkle.net format predicates, uh, the long is optional, and then the URI you want to query, and it will construct this query for you and return uh, the expected result. So for instance, if you look at this URL, you will ask for uh, G in JSON, so the JSON result for the DBPD abstract of that resources in this language. So this is actually the same thing than this query, but using that simple URL. So let's just click on it, get the file, open it, and what you get here simply is um, the JSON results uh, for that query. So you can see you've got the value here, which is um, so the DBpedia abstract uh, for semantic web, and you get the long here uh, English, and so it's JSON you can use in your application. Um, Sparkle super different formats, so XML or JSON that can be used if you want then to pass the query. But there are also HTML view that can be used to include directly the results in HTML page as well as uh, the error that is used for redirect to the first answer of the query. So if you use that link, um, actually that's an image, but yeah. Uh, so it said that I want to get the image of that resources, but use the air, uh, which means redirect. So if I click on it, I just got the URI of the image. So I can include that image in a web page. I will see in a few um, minutes how to do that. Um, so I mentioned that uh, you had to mention the format, but also the predicates, and the predicate must be used using the um, prefix value syntax. So there are a set of prefixes currently supported. Uh, the DBpedia prefixes, Dublin Core, Dope, Fake Boot, Fourth, and so. Um, currently, there is no way to add your cell prefixes, but just send me an email if something is not there. So there are some more examples. So in that case, I'm redirecting to one of the home page of Timberlessly. So in that case, you can see that this is not a DBpedia URI, but this is a URI uh, as the other that follows the link data principle. So if you dereference that URI, you get some RDF information about the resource. And thanks to this RDF information, uh, Sparkle is able to launch the query and get more information. So here, this is one another JSON example of the Sparkle query, uh, the Sparkle uh, resource, sorry, in DBpedia. Uh, here you can 
the member of the clash in HTML view. So here this is the HTML view. If I click, I should get the list. Uh, you can see that um, if the list contains resources, they are automatically displayed as hyperlinks. Uh, so you can click the links to get information to the resource and uh, as well if you have only one resource uh, there is no list but just raw HTML so and what you can see here there is nothing and automatically it loads uh, the information about that resource and actually if you look at the source code uh, this is done thanks to JSONP that um, allows to do some uh, AJAX cross um, domain name queries so what I say here, I've got my div called the clash, and I just construct that URI, uh, which is find the past members of that resources. But the result is HTML, and I say using that uh, jQuery uh, JSON function that allows to automatically uh, construct JSON P callbacks. Uh, I get the results in HTML, and I include it in my uh, web page. So that's why I get that list, but nothing in the in the source code uh, mentions this list and. This is the result of a Sparkle query, but I did not have to write any line of Sparkle. And JSONP has also the advantage, so as I said, it's out of, uh, cross domain queries. So, for instance, uh, I made that simple web page. I will reload it so that you can see that everything is loaded dynamically. So, I got the image, the content, and some more information. But if you look at the source code, there is only two uh, jQuery and JSONP callbacks on the Sparkle.net web service as well as a link with an image. So, as I said, if you use R, you've got a direct redirection to the first results of the query. So, here I say I want uh, to get the URL of the first fourth depiction of that resource and I put that in an image tag and this is how I get that image here. Uh, then I got the biography of the band, which is retrieved thanks that thanks to that um, uh, JSON callback. So I just have my uh, bio paragraph, and then I say fill in uh, the bio paragraph is the result of that query, uh, which is the abstract of the clash. Uh, here I got an hyperlink uh, to the home page. So you see here. Uh, the hyperlink is a sparkle.net and I will show you if you click on it actually you're not redirected to sparkle but to uh, to the home page that is identified as a dbpedia URL of that resource and it works obviously as I said not only on dbpedia but on any URI that follows that link that are principle of being dereferenceable and giving some RDF information about itself so here I just asked to all the fourth nodes of uh, myself in dbtune and you can see here the list of, the, of people that's, uh, that I know on DBTune. And this is the home page that I mentioned. Uh, so if you look at the link at the bottom, uh, you've got so the link to the sparkle.net query. But if you click on it, you directly go to, uh, to the website. So there it is. You can uh, simply use it, include, it uh, include the results in your applications. Oh, and I forgot to mention uh, regarding the implementation, it's uh, uh, less than 100 lines of code, actually just uh, an Apache rewrite rule to translate that URI um, uh, to get sorry the parameters of that URI in a PHP script, then the PHP script um, construct a Sparkle object, which is actually uh, these parameters, uh, so the URI, uh, the predicate and the long, and from those information it constructs the queries. Uh, then I'm using uh, rockets from LibreDF to run the query. I get the results and uh, I uh, fix the content type of the server and uh, give the answer. So there it is. You can try it often. Thanks. Bye.